And I'm registered dietitian Jennifer Stockler. And I'm Chef Dugan Wetzel. We are brought to you by Reed Health Community Benefits, WCTV, and RPNL. Today on iHeart Cooking, we're going to be discussing twists on comfort foods. So today on I Heart Cooking, we're going to be discussing comfort foods, but we're going to put a little twist on them. When I started asking around for, you know, when we're looking at comfort foods, what are some of the most common out there? The three I got were pizza, pasta, and mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So um, we've already done kind of a healthier version on mashed potatoes um, during the last couple of episodes when we did a... Um, shepherd's pie right. with cauliflower mashed potatoes. So today, as you can see, we have some cauliflower out and we're gonna be doing a cauliflower pizza crust this time. Um, I have done this before, I'm really excited about it. Um, we do kind of, um, we do this at home a lot. And the other one we're gonna be focusing on is gonna be a pasta, a healthy pasta as well. So we're gonna get started first with this cauliflower pizza crust. Certainly. Um, and this head of um, cabbage, or cauliflower we have. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're actually gonna cut through our cauliflower and take the middle out. We're really only using the florets. We don't need very much of a stem. Yeah. You can kind of see it over here, kind of what he's doing, he's cutting this out of there because that stem's really hard. Um, and that's something that we don't want that kind of texture into the actual product because right. you're not going to get a nice crust to it. Yeah, and what we're, we're going for is almost powder-like yes. consistency here. Yeah, so. what we're kind of bringing into the blender is they kind of use the term cauliflower snow is what you're going to eventually have as you kind of cut the stem out, um, take all the florets, and we're going to actually put it into a food processor here. Just gonna rough chop it just a little bit, make it easier to uh, start bl the blending process once it hits the food processor. Okay. And for this recipe, you want to probably medium to large um, head of cauliflower so you have enough that when you make your crust, um, it's going to make a good sized dough for you. Yep. Um, because it's, again, going to be a little bit different than your normal pizza crust dough. You don't have the flour in there. You don't have the yeast to let it rise. I mean, depending on the type you're using, it's, it's going to be different. So you want to make sure you have enough cauliflower, mm -hmm. um, roughly about two to three cups. Say we're probably good there. The rest there. Okay. So we're gonna put the lid on here, and we're gonna start developing that cauliflower um, snow they call it. Um, so we'll let this kind of run here. <laughs> Nobody saw it. As you see, can see, that didn't really take too long. Um, if you look at this, I mean, it literally looks like snow. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna take that off. And we're actually gonna put this into a bowl. Um, we're gonna put this into the microwave because we're gonna cook this now. Mm -hmm. um, For about four minutes, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of water to it, uh, kind of steam it. Because yes. it is so small that uh, you really don't take much time at all to do it. So just a little bit of water and then straight into the microwave. Our cauliflower is now done in the microwave. It has that four minutes of steam, so we'll pop it out here and um, 
kind of show you the next step is going to be wringing out all of that extra water in there because yep. that's something that um, cauliflower is a non-starchy vegetable um, it has a lot of water content and if you leave that water in there you're not going to get um, a really nice dough consistency it's mm -hmm. going to crumble apart it's going to be more um, you're going to see it kind of juice apart run juices off the side of your pizza and that's something you don't want when you're trying to right. make a nice crust here yeah moisture is the uh the enemy here when you're when you're trying to make a pizza crust out of cauliflower you want it yeah. to be as dry as possible so uh, with all that moisture it doesn't allow things to bind together very well uh so you just be a little patient uh wring it out and then once you stop seeing water come out of it wring it out again it's probably the most uh, important step in the uh, creation of a, a nice cauliflower Absolutely. pizza crust. Absolutely, and you can see the sting coming off here, so this is something you'll probably want it to let sit for a few minutes, because if you try to wring this now, you're more likely to kind of burn, burn yourself, yourself. it's gonna yep. be hot. Um, so let this just cool off a little bit. Um, and I mean, a, a nice dish towel you have at home mm -hmm. will work great. As you can see here, we have two of them here. Um, but yeah, very, very important step when you're doing this process right here. Absolutely. So now that we let the cauliflower snow kind of cool off a little bit after being in the microwave, we're gonna kind of drain and wring out that liquid, what that's inside there. Yeah. You can see here on the cutting board, just from sitting there, it's got that, that ring of moisture to it and the towel's already wet. So you know that there's a lot of a lot of liquid in there. So really, you're just gonna squeeze it out. You can see it just... We're getting there. It's amazing how much moisture is actually in food that you're not really aware of. Oh and, yeah. And then, uh, until you do something like this, I say there's a lot after you feel like you're done you know getting all of it out let it sit a little bit longer and there's probably even going to be more that comes out of that mm -hmm. so this is where you just got to take your time and again don't fly through this kind of step of the recipe so as you can see we're kind of getting the last squeezed out of the cauliflower snow if you kind of picture this i mean we started out with you know adding very little to this like even yeah. an ounce yeah and look how much water there is actually on in there um so that's where you can cut. see it's coming out of the cauliflower itself it's a non-starchy vegetable they're high water content in general um so yeah definitely don't want to uh, bypass that step and get all that water out of that cauliflower and you can see as dugan's kind of has handling it here it's in a nice firm ball now because of all of that water being excreted out of um, the cauliflower and we're going to be getting into that dough consistency um, mm -hmm. like you would with any other kind of pizza dough. Yeah, it really has. Uh, taking all that moisture out has uh, allowed it to bind itself together and it does It does have that nice uh, doughy texture to it. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to mix the flour and the butter together, this is, uh, this is kind of what it feels like here. So our next step here, uh, once we've got our cauliflower um, drained and in the bowl is to add our seasonings and our binders, uh, which is a little bit of cheese, and we're gonna use one egg. Yeah, absolutely. Just adding a little bit of that egg will help again, like Dugan said with the bindness. Mm -hmm. um, the cheese is gonna also add to some of the flavor as well to the dough. Um, and we're also gonna be adding um, oregano, we're adding basil, we're adding garlic powder, and we're adding some red pepper flakes. Give it a little bit of somewhat heat there and again flavor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As you can see, there's no salt in this product either. Um, a lot of original recipes of cauliflower does have salt that they add to it. We omitted that um, for the fact that you're getting a lot of sodium from the cheese and the Parmesan cheese that we're, or the mozzarella cheese and the Parmesan cheese that we're gonna be using. So I hate to add more of that and get too much of that salty flavor when we really don't need it right yeah it's uh it's really not necessary so what we're adding here is, is yeah. just about right we're saving some of the cheese for the toppings as well you can see the pizza sauce here is on top as well um, we're going to add those things a little bit later in the process yet okay so we're just going to simply just mix everything together and kind of incorporate it together so everything is meshed and then we can form our pizza dough. So after Dugan incorporated all the ingredients, we have a dough ball, just like mm -hmm. you would have any kind of other pizza crust ball. And we're gonna spread it apart 
Um, and again, depending on how much cauliflower snow you have, how big a cauliflower head you have, will depending on the amount of pizza dough crust that you um, that you create that you create yeah, and the absolutely. size of pizza you have. So that's something that a couple different ways you could do it. You can make it all into one big um, pizza dough, or sometimes I've even done it in individual ones, um, where I actually put some of that into um, cupcake pans. Sure. and do individual pizzas um, as well and kind of make it into a cup form. So there's a bunch of different ways you can utilize this crust. Um, today we're just gonna make it into one big pizza crust. As you can see, we have a, um, a crust here. We're gonna add some toppings um, here in a little bit, but first we're gonna actually bake this off for a little bit. We went ahead and started on parchment paper uh, because it is, uh, it's not dough, there's no, no real true binder of the flour and yeah. the, the gluten and everything in it. It's made from cauliflower, so it is going to crumble easier. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and started on parchment. So all we have to do is take our, our parchment, lift it up and put it on a pan so it doesn't disturb it as much yep. and it hopefully holds its shape. And we actually already have the pan in the oven. We have the oven set at 450 degrees. We got the pan warm already. Um, you can also do a pizza stone, put it in the oven beforehand, let it warm up. So you take the actual dough crust, once you have it at this stage, we're gonna slide it right onto that warm pan so um, the cook time does not slow down. Yeah, eight, eight, to, eight to 10 minutes here, real, yep. real fast to, to cook that cauliflower Absolutely. crust. So we're actually gonna take this parchment paper, you can just literally slide it right over the top there. Put it all together there. And we're gonna put it back into the oven, let it bake for like Dugan said, anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that will also depend on the size of the crust itself. We're going more with a uh quarter inch thick crust. That way it, it kind of stops it from burning too quick or cooking all the way through before we add all the toppings to it. Yep. Uh, and it's not too thick so that the middle is soft. Gets, yeah, yeah, it gets completely cooked through. Like I said, depending on if you're doing cupcake pan, if you're doing individual pizzas, that's all gonna make the different um, difference in how long you cook it as well. So again, we're gonna put it in here for the oven for a few minutes, then we'll come back, put our toppings on, and then we're gonna put it back in the oven to do the last final cooking. Mm -hmm. So our cauliflower pizza crust is ready. We're gonna take that out of the oven, put the toppings on, and then we're gonna put it back in for a few more minutes. Um, as Dukin takes this out, you can kind of see it's browning on the edges and um, around the bottom. Um, that kind of is a good sign that you get that golden color there that um, you want before you put on the rest of the toppings. Absolutely, and you can kind of see the cheese is binding everything together. Yep. Yeah, it's, this is gonna be, it's gonna be really good. So we're gonna put a pizza sauce on here. Um, you can find a lower sodium pizza sauce in the, um, your grocery in the aisle, or you can make your own homemade as well. Um, so we'll put a little bit on the base here, then we're gonna add some mozzarella cheese and Parmesan cheese. Um, we're gonna be making a cheese pizza. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, you can add any toppings you want to this. If you wanna add any kind of meat to it, pepperonis, um, you know, spinach if you want to add right. spinach um, looking at it you know adding more vegetables in there um, peppers, um, peppers olives good, mushrooms, mushrooms yeah all, thinking all, all the that. pizza toppings you can add as much as you want to this okay there we go you really don't need a lot of mozzarella because mozzarella once it melts actually ex expands itself out as it spreads and it's it has a nice uh, coverage area so don't worry if you see some red in there from the pizza sauce that isn't covered by cheese. By the time it cooks, it'll be, it'll be fine. So. so we'll place it back into the oven. The goal is to just let the cheese on top melt and get a nice golden brown to it, let it heat through, and it'll be done in a few minutes. So our uh, cauliflower pizza is, uh, just went off, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that out. And bring it over here so we can let it cool for a minute and then cut into it. You can see, like Dugan kind of explained before, the cheese melted apart, um, so it kind of spread over the um, pizza sauce there, so a great option there. Again, if you don't want to use the regular um, 
mozzarella cheese or pizza cheese. There are also soy-based cheeses you can do. You can do um, to make it more vegetarian friendly. They also make um, soy-based meats that you can also do for pizzas. They already have them crumbled up. Find those in your freezer sections um, just to give it a different twist on, you know, make it more possibly a healthier option because it's going to lower the saturated fats in there, um, but also very um, vegetarian friendly as well. So we cut up our cauliflower pizza crust. We let it cool a little bit. Um, as you can see, when I kind of hold this up here, you can see it kind of stills very firm crust. Um, again, depending on how big the dough is, how many toppings, that possibly no matter, I mean, because it's cauliflower, it could be crumbly a little bit, so sometimes having a fork helps, but you could also eat it like a normal pizza too, depending on size. So we'll take a bite of it here. Mm. A lot of great flavor there. Mm -hmm. You can get the flavor from all the cheeses we have in there, the basil, the oregano, um, spices in there. It's delicious. Very good, something to try again, something that's very low in carbs. For one whole pizza dough crust, there's probably around 18 to 20 grams of carbohydrates for the whole entire thing. So you're dropping those carbs down a lot, which makes it very diabetic friendly mm -hmm. if somebody is counting carbohydrates. Um, so definitely helps cut those out depending on toppings. You might have a little bit more there. Uh, depending on how much cheese you add, you're really doing low amounts of saturated fats, um, especially this one since we don't have a lot of different types of meats on there as well. Right. So um, again, very low in calories as well since we're eliminating some of the flours, the starch there, doing a non-starchy vegetable. So low in, low in fat, low in calories, low in carbs, low in sodium, um, great option for your pizzas. Yeah. So a nice Absolutely. twist on that classic food. That was very good. So now that we have our twist on pizza with the call of our pizza crust, we kind of change scenes here and we're gonna do a pasta dish. Very another type of comfort food, but instead of using actually a pasta noodle, the type you find in the box at the stores, we're gonna be using zucchini. So we're gonna be making zucchini noodles. So there's that twist on that comfort food. So we're gonna be actually making um, zucchini noodles with a creamy avocado sauce with it. Very quick and easy meal. Um, we have a nifty gadget here to try today that um, are available now. You see more often in stores. Um, but you have a couple different ways you could possibly make yeah. the zucchini noodle. Absolutely. So we've got our uh, zucchini uh, in the spiralizer and we're just going to easily, doing circular motion, make our noodles. Again, this is really easy and really fast. Um, We'll be done here in about I mean, 30, 30 seconds to a minute. I mean, you can use a food processor for this step as well. You can possibly use a knife for the step. You mm -hmm. can use a mandolin for the step. Um, like I said, these gadgets are now available on the shelves. They're more um, easier to find. Um, they actually have different thicknesses down here that you can choose from. So um, this is just one version of some of them that you can find out there. Very inexpensive, too. That's, uh, yes. that's another perk of it. Is it's it really doesn't cost very much to uh, to own one of these. And that's something, I mean, I, I purchased one of these for my, um, this one for my home because we have a lot of zucchini we grow and eventually I'm hoping to do more of these different zucchini noodles, carrot noodles, um, different noodles you can use throughout the vegetables. So I'm eliminating that carbohydrate um, source um, from the, that regular pasta that you find in the box. And I've also I'm eliminating a lot of processing and um, extra additive foods to preserve it on the shelf. So it's a great additive, not only, I mean, convenience, it could be very easy if you have a lot of leftover zucchini in the garden, but it's also gonna help um, nutritionally as well. Absolutely. Uh, the next step here, we've got our noodles cut. Uh, so we're just gonna let those sit for a minute. We are making our sauce. Um, what we did there is you just took your knife down into the avocado until you hit the seed and then you just twist all the way around the seed until you make it all the way through. Twist the top off and there's a couple ways you can get the pit out. I just stab it with the knife and pop it right out just like that. You can get a spoon and scoop it out however you want to do it. Um, but if you're looking for a clean uh, a clean bowl, a clean vessel, uh, just stab it with a knife. It's, it's really not uh, too difficult to do. So just get this one real quick. Okay. And 
and these are going to go straight into our food processor. Yep, we're going to mix everything together for the sauce. Um, Nice and easy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of just throwing things together. This is a meal that you can make in 30 minutes or less, um, which is always helpful, especially you know on days. Let's say you're at work all day, busy moms, busy families. Um, something nutritious, but yet yeah, very quick. Mm -hmm. Avocados are going to have a lot of those good fats that we're looking for, um, which are going to be those mono and polyunsaturated fats. Um, so again, it's going to lessen the amount of saturated fats and trans fats in the product, um, especially since there actually is going to be no protein source um, in general for this um, product. You can easily add some, you know, chicken or, you know, seafood or something like that to this. But um, for this recipe we're making today, we don't have that actual meat source there. Just taking the leaves off of this basil, um, we're going to be adding some fresh basil to the avocado sauce. Um, you could use dried as well. Um, taking this off, you can smell that. Oh yeah, it's very fresh. Basil right? flavor to it, and it's going to add a lot um, a, of good flavor to the actual sauce and the end of the mixture as well. Because again, like most other recipes, we don't add that salt to there. We emitted it out, and we're using a lot of our herbs to replace that um, flavoring. Just going to do a rough chop over it to uh, kind of help spread it out inside the mixture. It is getting processed, so this is just kind of a an easy way to help blend it all together. So. We're going to add all the rest of the ingredients besides the olive oil, um, mix them all together, pulse it, pulse it, and then we're going to be slowly adding the olive oil as it mixes so it kind of incorporates all together. Add some pine nuts there, we added some garlic, we're adding some pepper, we're adding some Parmesan cheese. and then some lemon juice. The lemon juice, the acid in the lemon juice is going to help uh, keep the color of mm -hmm. the avocado. It's gonna keep it from browning. It's gonna prevent that oxygen from getting in there and just oxidizing everything. So that's just a nice little additive. Um, if you like lime juice over lemon juice, that's, that's okay. You can certainly do that. It will, it will work, so. Pulse this together. Yep, I think we're all mixed here together. Um, so that's something that we're gonna slowly add the olive oil into the um, cre creamy pesto sauce. So we're gonna put this on low and just kind of incorporate that olive oil into that sauce. That we have the oil in there um, again make sure you have a nice as you kind of seen Dugan do this um, he just slowly added it as it kind of mixed together that way it incorporates all together because if you put the oil in all at once you're gonna have a hard time incorporating the whole all the ingredients in there and getting that smooth kind of texture we're looking for right. it's all gonna glump up and keep set it's gonna separate easier mm -hmm. uh, you see that a lot with homemade uh, dressings where the oil is separated from the other ingredients if you do it slowly and allow the, the blade to actually work and disperse everything evenly, you're gonna get a nice creamy texture. Everything's gonna get blended well together and it's gonna emulsify it uh, really nicely. So. We have our skillet here on the stovetop. We turn the heat on. We're gonna add some olive oil. Let that warm up. You can hear that the pan's warm. So now we're gonna add those zucchini noodles. And we're going to just saute them for about one to two minutes, get them a little cooked and soft. Yeah, they're, uh, we're just going to develop a nice brown color on them, uh, get them tender, and then we're just going to add them into our sauce. Our sauce, yep. Okay. Really fast, since they are so thin, um, it's only going to take a couple minutes for them to, to soften up. So we'll just let that uh, sit for a minute. We'll toss it maybe once, twice, and be done with it. Okay. So. 
So as we're cooking these through, like we said, it's gonna just take a few minutes, not long since they're so thin, but one nice thing again about these zucchini noodles or if you do any kind of vegetable noodles, um, anytime you have zucchini, a half a cup cooked is five grams of carbohydrates. If you're kind of looking at counting carbs or diabetic friendly, um, where, it, so a cup of cooked would be about 10 grams of carbohydrates. A cup of cooked pasta, you're looking about between 40 and 45 grams of carbohydrates. So right there, you're cutting a lot of that in half. Not only that, you're cutting that carbohydrates, or well, not carbohydrates, but the calories in half as well. Um, so it's definitely gonna be something that's diabetic friendly, heart healthy friendly, and also help with weight loss as well if you're looking at you know, those different kind of disease states or ways to kind of make it, you know, a healthier choice for yourself. Just about a minute longer here and then we'll add it to our bowl and toss it with our sauce. Yep. So. Not much longer. So now that our zucchini is cooked through, we took it off the skillet, placed it in the bowl, and we're gonna mix it in with our avocado pesto sauce. And then the meal's completely done. As you can see, very quick and easy, not a lot of time. Um, I believe the longest time is probably putting the oil into the sauce with the food processor because the rest of it doesn't take much time at all. Very quick, yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. And add some Parmesan cheese on top, get a little bit of different coloring there, a um, little extra flavor, especially since we omitted that um, salt out of it. Parmesan cheese would add a little bit of tint to that, but you're not adding much no, at all. No. So low calorie, low carb, low fat, low sodium. No, there's actually no um, protein source, so you're, not, you're emitting a lot of the saturated fats. You could easily, like we said, add chicken, mm -hmm. add any type of seafood to this dish. Um, but yeah, great, easy, quick meal for, again, nights when you're in a rush. Sure. So now we have our dish done here. We're gonna take a bite. And again, you can see it just like spaghetti noodles, long strands that you have there. <laughs> if I can keep it on my fork, maybe. Got a really a nice, uh, nice basil flavor. A little bit of that, that mm. lemon juice in it, creaminess from the, the avocado and the oil. Absolutely. It's a nice substitute for a regular pasta dish. Absolutely, Absolutely. It's gr it tastes great. Um, depending on the thickness or the timing of the cooking of this and the thickness of it, you get still a little bit of crunch, which is nice uh -huh. with this dish because right. it adds a different texture there. Right. But I agree with you, that basil in there definitely does a lot there. So a great pesto dish. Um, to use with avocados, good with healthy fats, low carbs, low sodium, low in calories, quick, healthy, easy meal, and a twist on another comfort meal. Thanks for tuning in to I Heart Cooking. We hope you enjoyed all the recipes we did today when we talked about doing a twist on comfort foods. For more recipes like today's episodes, you can visit readhealth.org backslash iheartcooking. We'll see you next month.